I've lost quite a few friends over this, but in turn I've gained 40,000 Twitter followers. People do think that reform is just for older people, and it's not. Big, brash, and bro -y. Reform UK had the most online engagement of any party this election. TikTok was the place where I saw them, that, that's where they sort of made the name for themselves, especially in Nigel. And who was watching? Well, mostly young men. Young blokes want to be young blokes, and they feel the world is telling them not to be young blokes. They were twice as likely to have voted reform than young women, moving away from traditional groupings. The Conservative Party are completely directed towards boomers. Forming a fresh crop of voters with big political ambitions. I would like to be Prime Minister waving, yeah, I'd love that. Who could be the future of this political movement. Hey, TikTok, my name is Nick. I'm a first-time Gen Z voter and I'm supporting Reform UK. Nick became a political influencer after his first TikTok supporting reform went viral overnight. I made my TikTok the Sunday prior, and then next Sunday I was meeting Nigel Farage. I was absolutely starstruck. Hey, hey guys, look again. The conference they're short, they're snappy, I'm really energetic in them, and I just come across like I'm having a fun time. I think people like that. It is young people, but it's also young boys, young men. Yes. What do you think it is about reform that attracts that demographic? I think with the uh, onset of um, fourth-wave feminism and all of that, I, I, for one, believe that young men are feeling increasingly disenfranchised by society, and quite frankly, I think reform offers an exciting alternative because reform does not discriminate. Something remarkable is happening with Gen Z. Data from the general election shows a growing gulf between how young men and women are voting. The so-called bro vote is on the rise, with young men twice as likely to have voted reform in the election than young women. And for 16 to 17-year-olds, 35% of young men said they would have voted reform, making Farage's party as popular with this demographic as Labour. Hello, my name is George Finch. I'm 18 years old. George Finch started a reform-focused magazine online. So energised by his TikTok success during the election, he says it's by reformers for reformers. All of us have got that one common goal, and it's to get reform um, to win. And, and our articles are highlighting inaccuracies, and bad policy from Labour and Conservative. To say that... that women are put off by reform, it, it, that's wrong. When women aren't put off by reform, women vote for reform. Young um, women? But, but, sorry? Young women? Yeah, young women vote for reform, they do. You it's want as choice. many voters to vote for you as possible? Yeah. So if you see it skewed so heavily in one way, surely you want to make sure as many people Well, I'm voting. sure there's, if, if you see this as a significant issue for reform, I'm sure HQ are, are, are solving this. HQ say they have all the momentum in British politics. But in the election, not only were less than 20% of reform candidates women, these five men were elected to Parliament. More controversially, this year, Nigel Farage told Sky News that the self-proclaimed misogynist influencer Andrew Tate was an important voice for men. Tate has been banned from YouTube for breaching hate speech rules and on Facebook for being a dangerous individual. He was also accused of rape, people trafficking and organised crime, though he denies these allegations. His controversial views have helped to grow an audience of millions online. This is Charlie. He spent the summer campaigning for Reform UK on a battle bus with Nigel Farage. We stand here united! But three months later, now at just 13 years old, he's moved further to the right, attending and speaking at Tommy Robinson rallies. I've got an opinion on immigration and stuff like that. Obviously, you've stopped the boats and all that kind of stuff. Do you think from the summer to now, you've spent more time online? Yes, and I believe me being online has helped me actually develop my views. Because if I, say for example, if I were to just watch a normal TV, I would say, oh, what a racist person he is. What a racist person they are. But no, now I'm on Twitter, I see it all firsthand. I mean, we had the wonderful Urban Scoop covering the protests and the riots and stuff. And we actually got to see it firsthand, what was actually really going on, and the anger and the frustration people had. Um, so I think me being on social media has really developed my views. I mean, I believe just, you know, people that hold the same views as me, they'll always comment on my posts and say, yeah, I agree with that, and I believe that's a major thing, as if that I'm not alone, you know, you know, you know with these opinions. Kind of spurs you yeah. on? Yeah, exactly. Does it make you feel reassured? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I'm not going to be shouting with a megaphone about my opinions if no-one's listening. 
uh, I believe people, you know, taking in these views, it helps, yeah. And increasing numbers do seem to be listening. An anti-establishment rhetoric now filling a political gap that mainstream politics won't. Serena Buck Singh, Sky News.